So the current advice and guidance is Go ahead and write as much Azimax code as you can. Write, uh, write your code in Azimax wherever possible. Build web services. Web services today are probably the closest mapping that we have to what we call an Indigo service moving forward. So if you're going to be developing code, especially from scratch, write as much of it in Azimax as you can. The other thing is that your Azimax code will port very, very cleanly and very, very smoothly to Indigo. We're doing a lot of work to make sure that code migration process happens nicely. And also, anything that you build and, de and deploy today using Azimax will be interoperable on the wire with Indigo. So if you go ahead and build, I don't know, a new accounting system, for example, as a set of web services, then you'll be able to consume those services and interoperate with those services from any new Indigo code without necessarily needing to write, rewrite them straight away. If you want to then later rewrite your, your uh, accounting service in Indigo and reap its benefits, then great, you can go ahead and do so. And we'll provide a smooth code migration path there. So Asmex is the primary means by which we, su we suggest you move forward with, with app development. If you need, for example, to interoperate with Complus componentry, if you need to interoperate with existing components and technologies you may have, or you have existing developments underway, or you maybe need some of the sophisticated features of Complus and, and enterprise services, then we suggest that you, you go ahead and develop enterprise service code, but keep it within your service boundary. And we'll have a load of prescriptive guidance up on MSDN within the next couple of months on what a service boundary is and, and how you should go ahead and implement your systems. But essentially, write web services, use enterprise services internally for component-oriented development. If you then want to do asynchronous development, um, stuff like the uh, MSMQ type applications, then go ahead and use MSMQ, but more specifically the system.messaging namespace on top. Try not to write nat uh, native code, try and write, man write managed.net code, because your whole, whole code migration path will be much, much smoother if you're in, in .net code already. Um, and the big, the big issue point really around all of this is what if I've already invested in remoting? What if I've built an, a, a pile of remoting infrastructure already? What we suggest is if you need to use remoting, if you feel a need to use remoting, then go ahead but keep it inside your, your service boundary. Keep it inside your service. Don't expose it to the outside world. Don't provide access to your remoting technology to services beyond the boundary of the service that you're implementing. This is a very, very important point. Um, remoting has limited interoperability. If you've Im implemented remoting components, they won't interoperate nicely with Indigo on the wire. And moving forward, they probably won't interoperate all that nicely with other platforms on the wire. So that's not a good choice. And if your other option is, well, I need a very high performance communication channel between a caller and a service, then enterprise service, quite frankly, is probably the fastest you're going to get because it is um, it's DCOM on the wire, which is extremely fast, extremely performant, and it's in an infrastructure that's been tuned over the last 10, 15 years. So it's a very, very high performance, very, very resilient uh, infrastructure, or it can be made to be so. Um, but very much choose to, choose to write code in ASMAX, choose to use enterprise services for the majority of your component development if you need to use components, use MSMQ and system.messaging if you need to do async, and use remoting where absolutely necessary, and only then. So for remoting in particular, the absolutely necessaries that we see are supporting things like cross-app domain in proc communications between components and handling custom wire protocols. Apart from that, we, we thoroughly recommend using enterprise services wherever possible.